everybody, welcome to Church Online. We're so glad that you're joining us today and we really believe that God has something for you. So I hope you're ready to be encouraged, ready to be taught and ready for your heart to be lifted and our eyes to be lifted up to Jesus because that's what we're all about. We're all about building community. We're all about taking next steps in faith. And so we're gonna do that together today. If this is your first time or you're new to us at Church Online, we'd love for you to take a minute and text NEW to the number on the screen so that our team can connect with you and we can just help you connect to the life of this great church at GT Church. So let's engage now, whatever that looks like for you, stand up maybe, just center your heart, get your coffee ready, and let's get ready to worship Jesus together because worshiping Him changes everything. You do. 
Uh, what a great reminder of what a strong and powerful and mighty Savior we have in Jesus, that he is capable, that he is worthy to be praised, that he sees it all and he holds it all together. I hope your heart feels encouraged. And, and I know and I'm so aware even right now that, that these days can feel heavy, that there's a lot of hard things going on in, in our lives and people around us. And around the world right now especially, there's a lot of really heavy situations. And so we just want to lift those things up to the one who really is in control, the one who really loves us and who can make a difference. We believe that prayer changes things and that the prayers of righteous people really changes things. And so let's pray together. Let's join our hearts together in all the different locations that we are and lift up our hearts to Jesus right now. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we are so grateful that you are the risen Savior, that you are the one we worship and magnify because you are worthy of all honor and all praise and all sacrifice. And so, Jesus, we know that you are in control of everything that is going on in every situation, every life, every heart, in every country of this world right now. And so I lift up every individual who's suffering, who needs a healing touch, who needs encouragement, who's feeling overwhelmed, who's feeling discouraged, Holy Spirit, would you come and touch them and meet them right where they are, lift their hearts, lift their eyes, increase their faith so that they have faith to believe for greater things. Give them hope in their situation. Just reach in right now and touch them. And God, we're so aware that around the world there are so many people suffering right now. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters in Haiti who have lost so much, who are facing devastation and floods and, and all the aftermath of the earthquake. And we just pray for your intervention, for your help, that it would get there swiftly. God, show us what we can do. Um, open opportunities for people to be a part of the solution. And we just pray for encouragement and divine protection and support for the people that are there. We also lift up Afghanistan to you right now. God, and we just pray that you would have mercy on those people on our brothers and sisters there, on the church, the underground church there, that you would protect her, that you would just put your angels around every person who is in danger, who is fleeing, who is under terror, or under attack. God, would you make a way, would you protect them? Would you, um, would you just make a way for people where there seems to be no way? And God, we just ask for your intervention and your mercy. We do trust you, God, in situations that we can't understand. In every one of these situations, and those that are unspoken to, we know that you're in control. We know that you're good. And so we just declare your goodness today. We declare faith and hope in Jesus' name. And we know that the cross changed everything, and there's hope in the name of Jesus. So we just continue to pray and believe for miracles, believe for your intervention in our lives and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for continuing to pray with us as the days and weeks unfold. And, and we just want to let you know that um, there's some great ways for you to, to connect here at GT Church. And for those of you who are in Victoria, we have a team night coming up on September 8th. And this is going to be live at our Victoria campus. And this is a great way for you to connect to community and to life. And so if you've ever served on team before, or maybe you're looking at a way to get connected and you just haven't taken that step, we wanna invite you to come. Um, there's website, our website has registration on it. You can sign up to attend, whether you've ever been a part of serving in any capacity or not. Team involves everyone who serves and makes GT such a great place. And that includes our online team. So please reach out to us on our website if you'd like to sign up or if you want more information about what that could look like for you. This upcoming week, we have an incredible opportunity to be a blessing to hundreds of children in our city who are getting ready to go back to school and maybe don't have everything that they need for school supplies. So we have a back to school campaign where we supply backpacks full of brand new school supplies. We do a barbecue and just bless children who are heading back to school right in Victoria, in the heart of Victoria. These are kids we've connected to through um, our mini markets, through our outreach at the Cridge and, and different areas of town that we have relationship with and we get to bless them with the tangible love of Jesus. So we're inviting you, if you wanna to give today to Kingdom Builders, then that can go to support our back to school campaign and you also get to be part of blessing a child who just needs a fresh start this fall. So you can give anytime, you can text give to the number on the screen um, every week for tithes and offerings. And above and beyond that, you can give to Kingdom Builders and this month's Kingdom Builders project will be our back to school campaign. 
And so thank you for your generosity. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. We love being a generous church and love seeing what God is doing. Well, let's get ready for a great message now from Pastor Andy. Hi, GT family. It is so good to be back with you. Ah, I'm just so glad that we can share this time together. Um, I have been off for a long time, for three months. Um, I, I spent a sabbatical time away and uh, it's been so good. I was resting, I was learning, I was reflecting, refueling. Um, and the reason why is because we need times like that to pull away and to rest so that we can step into what's next. So I'm ready. I'm ready for this next season. I'm ready as we begin to rebuild church and all that we're doing. Um, boy, I did exactly what I needed to do. And so I want to thank the leadership team for their foresight and allowing me the opportunity to go. And um, I, I want to thank the, the staff for carrying the weight in my absence. And I'm just back and excited and glad to be with you today. So uh, I want to just jump into the message. My message is a simple message today, and the title of it is Being with Jesus. Being with Jesus. So I had many adventures on Vancouver Island um, on my time off. Uh, boy, I went to some beautiful places I'd never been before. I made it all the way to the northern tip of our island, saw many communities um, connected with, with uh, many family members, had good, rich moments with my family. But most of all, I got to enjoy my God. You see, when, when you do this, when you do church full time, it's so easy for your connection to Jesus to be rooted in church life, in busy effort, in organizational needs, in board meetings, in staff development, and so on. But I've had a very unique three months. There was no platform. <laughs> there was no meetings to lead, no sermons to preach, no counseling sessions. All of my doing for God stopped. And I was left with these wide open spaces to simply be with God. And that focus, that pursuit has really changed me for the good. And, and so if, if I was going to share my story with you today, the story is one of being refreshed, of being renewed, of being inspired by being with Jesus. I want to explain it this way to you. You see, I am not a strong swimmer. In fact, if you've spent much time around Lisa, my amazing wife, she loves to tell stories about how bad I am at swimming. And in fact, she would never look to me to save her life if we were swimming. I actually sink really well, and I could never float even if my life depended upon it. And, and I don't know if that's just my bone density or the length of my legs or the, the lack of experience or whatever, but I grew up in the desert um, in Arizona, and there's no water, there's no rivers, there's no lakes, just a whole lot of heat and dirt. And when I was about 12 years old, it seemed like my friend group suddenly got interested in the swimming pool. And um, I had a few uh, friends who had friends who had swimming pools, but it was the public swimming pool that captured the attention of my friends. And so they started going and the invitation started to come to me. The truth is I couldn't even swim. I'm 12 years old, I can't swim at all. So the inv invitations come, and at first I just declined out of embarrassment. But then the summer heat got the better of me, and I said, okay, I'm going to come. Let's go. One hot summer day, I accepted the invitation to go swimming. Or actually, in my case, it was just to wade in the water. And uh, I stayed in the shallows the whole time while my friends ventured out into the deeper waters. And I wanted to go out with them, but I was only comfortable in the shallow water. And this picture really tells the story of what so many of us experience in our walk with Jesus. We simply haven't gone with Jesus into the depths of his presence. We've remained in shallow places. We've remained where we have felt like we could have one foot on the shore and one foot in the water because that has felt most comfortable to us. But here's the thing. You are called by Jesus into those deeper waters. 
He wants you to experience his presence and his companionship on a much deeper level. He wants to teach you how to swim. I actually remember when I was first learning to swim. Went with a friend to um, a friend's house who had a swimming pool. And I'm clinging to the wall as we go out into the deeper water. They're, you know, they're swimming, enjoying themselves. And I'm stuck hanging onto the wall. But I'm there. I'm in the deeper water. And then I got to this point where I felt confidence enough to kind of let go of the wall and, and try to tread water for a little bit and then grab back on. And then after a while, I figured out I could push off of the wall and make it across to the other side and grab onto the wall. It's a pathetic sight if you really think about it. But eventually, I just said, I've got to learn to swim. And I began to grow in my confidence in my ability to feel my body in the water, to sense a, enough buoyancy to keep my head above the water. And, and I began to tread water. I began to swim when I pushed off from the wall, swim across to the other side. And, and slowly I began to learn how to swim. And now, although not a great swimmer, I've got a lot more to learn. I can do it and I enjoy it. And it's fun with the family and so on. And I just think that there's a picture here for you. That there is so much that's waiting for you in the depths of Jesus' presence, in being with him. And it would be so disappointing to get to the end of your life and to never have had the opportunity to go with Jesus into those deeper places. My sermon is about being with Jesus. If by the end of it, you feel inspired to press in or if, if you will, push off from the wall and swim a little bit in that deep water, then I'll feel that I've done my job. The truth is this is the kind of message that many people would just kind of turn away from. It doesn't have a lot of glamorous um, fanfare in it. It's not, um, it's not uh, dramatic, but it's deep. It's real. It's true. Being with Jesus changes your life. I want to take you now to the text that I want to use for this message. And um, I'm going to be building off of this message for next week. So make sure you, you jump back in with us then. But I want to look at Mark chapter 3, uh, verses 13 to 15. They're going to come up here on the screen and we're going to look together at it. Um, this is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, right? When he's just he called some of his disciples together. There's crowds that are starting to gather. And then this verse comes in. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him, on that mountainside, called to him those he wanted. And they came to him. I'm sure glad that they responded when Jesus invited them to come to him. And here's what happened when they were there. He appointed 12 that they might be with him. First thing they're called to, be with him. And that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. So we, we see three pieces here. Jesus gave the 12 disciples a job description containing three responsibilities. Number one, be with him. Be with Jesus. In other words, stay with him at all times. Be close to him. Number two, that he might send them out. To be sent out by Jesus. That's the second part of the job description, if you will. And that's to carry to others the message that you will learn from being in relationship with him. And thirdly, to... to Understand this authority that he's going to give you to exercise authority from Jesus, overcoming obstacles with the authority he will give you. So in order, going and doing are followed by being. Let me say that again. Going and doing are followed by being. Being with Jesus is where it begins. Before you can go at Jesus' command, before you can do what Jesus is commanding you, you have to be with him in order to hear him and to discern his heart 
so that you can represent him wherever it is that he sends you. So here's the concept. The concept is this. Public service for Christ is the fruit, not the root, of our personal relationship with Christ. You see in that? In other words, your, your going and your doing is the fruit, not the root, of your personal relationship with Jesus. The fact that you've developed a being with him. And so then when you go and that public ministry is the fruit, it's what flows out of being with him. And, and unfortunately, so many of us get that mixed up and we go and we do, but we haven't cultivated the being. And so we suffer and we fail and we push away. And when hard times come, we don't know how to find the hope or the consistency or the faith to continue on when something bad happens when we go through crisis when we have difficulties or when there's just perplexities and mysteries and questions we can find ourselves without a place to be tethered because we haven't developed the being with Jesus you know the Bible spoke of the coming of Messiah the coming of Jesus and, and, and said he will be called Emmanuel which means God with us how appropriate that Jesus would make being with him our primary occupation, our primary calling, if you will, is to be with him, the one who is Emmanuel, God with us. You see, Jesus' invitation to be with him was literal to the disciples. They were together. They were together in the city, they were together in the country, and on all the roads in between, they stayed with Jesus in homes, in the temple, in the synagogues, they walked with Jesus, they fished with Jesus, they served with Jesus. Hey, they survived storms with Jesus, right? In the words of um, Brother Lawrence, the disciples practiced the presence of Jesus 24-7. Let's read this quote together from Brother Lawrence, I cannot imagine how a Christian can live a satisfied Christian experience without the practice of being in the presence of Christ. Do you see that? He's saying, I don't even have a framework for being a Christian and having a satisfying experience without actually being in the presence of Christ, which makes sense when you write it down. But so many of us don't live that way. And so here's what Brother Lawrence says. For my part, I keep myself retired with him. <laughs> I like the way he says that. Retired with him in the center of my soul as much as I can. And this last little piece is so key. While I am with him, I fear nothing. Isn't that a cool thought? I want to circle back around to what Brother Lawrence said in just a moment. But let me... Let me start with, um, I'll, I'll continue on with an illustration and then go back to that. I, uh, on one of my adventures, I was out kayaking. I did quite a bit of kayaking over my, my time off. And I was out kayaking on a lake. And all of a sudden, I looked up in the sky and I saw this bald eagle, this beautiful bald eagle flying by. And I just watched it and it kind of circled around. And I realized that it was circling over a bunch of ducks you know, like a mom and a dad and a, and a bunch of little ducklings out in the middle of this lake. It was quite a big lake and they were out in the middle and, and they were vulnerable, right? And, and this is where the term sitting ducks comes from, right? Like they were just out there and the eagle, I thought he was just putting on a show for me, but he was actually circling his dinner, right? He was looking for a meal. And so here's all these ducks and I was like, oh my goodness, What's going to happen here? Like these ducks, they're in trouble. This eagle is powerful and capable and has, you know, strong talents and, and wants to just grab one of those, you know, one of those little ducklings, right? So I'm watching and here's what happened. It's so amazing to watch. The mom and the dad are out there and, and I got kind of close so I could see. I didn't want to disrupt the National Geographic thing that was happening in front of me, but I just got close, right? And, and so I'm watching and I'm, I'm watching the eagle. He starts flying out far and then he dips down. He comes right over the surface of the water, right where those ducks are. And, and, and as he gets closer, you hear mom and dad, they start quacking away, quack, 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 quack. And then as he comes by, 
all of them, the, the ducklings and the ducks, they dive under the water and he goes, whoosh, goes right by. And I watched him circle and dive and come right to the surface of the water at different angles, all trying to get to those ducks. And they understood that the safety was under the surface. They understood that in the depths, they were safe. They understood that in those places of being immersed under the surface of the water, that the eagle couldn't get them. And it's like God spoke to me. The reason why this was working for the little ducklings is because mom and dad were there. Mom and dad were there to tell them when it was time to dive, when it was time to go deep. And so God began to speak to me. And it was like he was saying to me, so many of my followers are out on the lake without me. They're out on the lake and they're vulnerable. Yes, it's a big lake. Yeah, yeah our world is vast. Yes, our, our experiences are, are vast. But Jesus wants to be with us in every one of them. You get out there on your own and the vulnerability is real. But if you immerse yourself in the presence of God, it's like diving under that water at just the right time. It's like being immersed in the presence of God. If you go back to what Brother Lawrence said, he said, when I am with him, I have no fear. You see, Jesus said, be with me. And some of you are going, well, that would be more realistic for us if we, like the disciples, could see Jesus face to face. We kind of say that with a sigh. Like, well, you know, here we are 2,000 years later. But Jesus addressed this objection at the very end of his earthly ministry. Because, see, the, the disciples were facing the same uncertainty. Jesus was going away. They were going to have to do this alone. What, what was it that Jesus was going to say to them as they stepped into their future as the carriers of this fledgling movement? What was it that Jesus was going to say to them? And let's look together at Matthew 28 because we can see it right here. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, known as the, the Great Commission. But let's read it together. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority, I have that underlined for a reason. You heard that before, authority. We're talking about it from Matthew 3. You're going to see the parallel now. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And the next part of the verse goes on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, the job description of Mark chapter 3 and the Great Commission in Matthew 28 bookend and mirror each other. They contain the same elements in reverse. Mark chapter 3, Jesus spoke of being with him and then being sent out by him, and then having authority, right? In Matthew 28, Jesus spoke of having authority, and then he commands them to go, and he promises to be with them. So at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he said, be with me. At the end of his ministry, he said, I'm with you. I'm with you. You see, the disciples will no longer see his face, but Jesus assured them, and us, that he would be as present as he had ever been. Isn't that good? So here's my experience. My experience is this. Being with Jesus is a calling. That's Mark 3. Come and be with me. But being with Jesus is also a promise. I promise I'm going to be with you. It's a calling because it requires intentionality. And it's a promise because the road of life is very difficult. You know, I want to talk for just a moment about those two ideas, those two thoughts, about the calling to be with Jesus. Let's start there. See, there's a sense that if in the calling of Jesus, you need to feel the open invitation today. Maybe you're here and you've been listening along with me this day and you've been living your life without the conscious presence of Jesus. It's not that maybe that, that you don't even, 
you know, that you don't believe in him. Maybe you do believe in him. Maybe you even, you know, have your little devotional times in the morning or reflect with others about Jesus. But you've not been taking seriously the call of Jesus to be with him and to live in the conscious presence of Jesus. And some of you have to confess that you've actually taken the open invitation of Jesus for granted. Your Bible is dusty. Your knees are smooth, if you will. Your voice is silent when it comes to worshiping him. So hear me say it again. You are called to be with Jesus. So steward that invitation well. It's an invitation from the King of Kings. Steward it well. But as I mentioned, being with Jesus is also a promise. And I know there are those watching today and you feel lost. You feel alone. Maybe you're wounded and the pain is very real today. Maybe you're struggling with loneliness or or maybe there's something you're carrying as a heavy burden and you don't know where to lay it down. Let me remind you, Jesus promised to be with you. He's there. Turn to him. Give him your pain. Share with him your needs. I, I just feel like I'm on a mission today. Like Jesus sent me to remind you that he has promised to be with you. Receive his promise today, okay? And I also wonder if maybe there's someone watching today that has never taken Jesus up on his invitation to have a personal relationship with him. Maybe today you feel Jesus calling to you and he's inviting you into relationship. Maybe you're ready to say, Jesus, I accept your invitation. I'm ready to orient my life around you. If that's the case, I want to encourage you, text life to the number on the screen. Because he who finds Jesus finds life. And so when you text that number, just just text the word life. Because finding Jesus is finding life. And, And maybe you're watching on church online. And I just want to encourage you, click the hand that says, I want to accept Christ. Click that hand. That's your way of responding to the invitation of Jesus today. And so next week, I'm going to talk about how you can orient your life around his presence, how you can build into this idea of being with him, how you can take that calling seriously, how you can embody that promise for yourself specifically. But I, want to, I just want to pray with you now as we close up this time. And I want to start by having you verbalize your intentions. Can I, can I invite you into a time of prayer, a time where you close yourself in with Jesus, maybe even want to close your eyes or extend your hands, just quiet yourself, maybe with a, just with a deep breath, just quiet yourself before Jesus. Just understand that the Bible so clearly tells us that there is nowhere that we can flee from his presence that he's always with us, that he is everywhere. So right where you are right now, Jesus is there. And I just want to encourage you to verbalize your intention. Start by saying, Jesus, I want to be with you. I want to encourage you just in that settled space of quiet before the Lord, conscious of his presence. I want to be with you. I want to be with you today, Jesus. I understand my calling to be with you. I understand the promise that we can be together. Just start by verbalizing my intentions. I want to be with you. Yeah. And let me pray for you, okay? God, I thank you. I thank you for your call. The call that says, come and be with me. That call that's extended to every believer. It challenges us. It pulls us out of the distractions. 
it beckons us to find those quiet spaces, those, those wide open spaces of your presence, to be with you, to grow in you, to learn of you. Oh God, I pray that you would inspire us, inspire us with the incredible joy that waits for us in your presence. Lord, I pray that we would sense ourselves longing to push away from the shallows and into the depths of your presence, Lord. No longer feeling as though it's adequate to have one foot on land and one foot in the water. Lord, we want to be immersed in you. We want to be completely submerged in your presence. Lord, I pray that you would capture us. And even right now, for those that are saying, I want to be with you, Holy Spirit, would you come and visit them? Make the person of Jesus so real to them, Lord. Bridge the distance between where I am and where they are. Bridge that distance and reach right into their lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your call and we also thank you for your promise that you will be with us. That promise comforts us. That promise gives us hope. That promise provides healing. And so today we thank you, Lord, that we can say with all of our hearts, we wanna be with you. And we can understand that that yearning, that longing is something that you have to. You wanna be with us. You wanna be our companion in life. You wanna walk us through our challenges. We don't have to be alone in the burden, in the problem, in the pain. So come, Lord Jesus. And over the course of this coming week, Lord, would you just remind us that you're near? I pray that you would allow us to be quickened, if you will, reminded in our own spirits about your presence, that we would long for that, and that we would begin to cultivate, and for some of us for the first time, for others of us again, that we would cultivate that joy of being in your presence, of being with you. And in that, having such a sense of fulfillment that we are exactly where you have called us to be and exactly where you have promised to meet us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you feel so encouraged. I hope that you feel like you're ready to take some next steps with Jesus. And you know, if you have just given your life to Jesus this week or recently, we wanna help you by giving you a Bible. And so would you reach out in the chat or reach out online? We have Bibles for you. We have people that can connect with you and help you take next steps in your journey. Maybe that's signing up for a team like we talked about earlier. Maybe that's considering um, a small group in the fall, which will be launching in just a few weeks. Uh, whatever it is, we wanna help you. So stay connected, reach out. You can sign up online for our email newsletter and that's a great way to stay connected to the life of the church. We love you, church. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope your hearts feel encouraged and we'll see you again next week.